Troweling down biblical archaeology for the 21st century. Hi, I'm Gary Byers. This is Dr. Stephen Collins, our resident rock star. And we're not going to talk about rocks today. We're going to talk about pottery. Pot star then. Pot star then. That, well, that works, I guess. So uh, we're in the, the uh, Houston Hall classroom. And um, right now we, uh, we've got our Italian film director, Daniel Gallicini, has got pottery strewn all over the room. And I want him to justify what his mess is. So, Danny, come on. Now, normally you're behind the camera. Yeah. And that's Percy there, so he gets some credit. And Percy's behind the camera. Tell us what's going on. Okay, so part of the process to get to publication, I'm going to pin this on. Are you done talking? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, is that we photograph all of the pieces of pottery that we bring back at various um, stages in various groupings. So um, the first stage we do what we call a locus assemblage based on where the pottery was actually found in relation to it to um, other pottery that was found in the same same locus um, then we have to cut individually each sherd and then we photograph those and the reason that we're going to be photographing them the way that we do today and uh, we call it the Ludini method because the the little um, jig setup that we have was created by um, uh, Michael Ludini uh, who is our original photographer, really wonderful guy. He's been on all sorts of digs over the years. So um, since he created the jig, we, we, we call this the Ludini method. The reason we do it this way is to um, photograph just the profiles of the pottery. So if you can imagine a pot being cut straight down the middle, then when you look in the, uh, the publications, you see the little edges of, of the outline shape of what that pottery form looked like. So the pottery that we've got over here um, has been cut so that you can see a profile. And I remember when I started working with you guys that we actually would be putting these on index cards. And tracing. And tracing it. And then I guess you scanned those and well, we never did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and actually, um, we've got the book. Is that right there, Larissa? So we'll show you what, what eventually this turns into. So here's our, our first volume of our, our publication that's going to be, what, 20 million volumes? Several volumes. So here is what eventually we do with each of these photographs that we're going to be taking. And that um, shows us what, what that diagnostic piece is. So the way that this works now, and it's, it's kind of silly, you get a, get a black sock. And if you look over here, you can see our, our little uh, jig set up so that we've got a camera. The piece of glass helps us to be able to put this um, to exactly the same focal point every time and the trick is to cover this entirely up and you can see the black background and I'm kind of wearing a dark dark outfit and then if you want to pan over and see what the camera sees I don't know if we're able to see that or not yeah we can see that a little bit that's actually what the photograph is going to look like. And then we run it through some Photoshop, so we convert the black background to a white background, and then we take the color out of the um, pottery shirt itself. And um, since we've got the centimeter marker right there, we can line it up with um, the uh, rest of the uh, uh, pottery assemblages. So they're all to scale. So this, this uh, works out as a real quick way to do this, and uh, that's what I'm doing today. And if you look over here, you can see how much of this stuff, oh my gosh, did you guys, 
That's I don't have to do that today, right? No. We <laughs> okay. robbed the museum. Those okay. are already photographed. Those are what you guys you guys are gonna you and Gary are gonna talk about. Um, all righty, but yeah, I'm gonna get back to work on this stuff. And uh, Steve and, and Gary are gonna talk a little bit more about uh, what they've got over here for the rest of this episode. So there you go, Gary. Thank you, Dan. You and your team doing a great job here. And um, this is so critical. If if we don't uh, take care of the pottery, record the pottery accurately, we really don't have much to show from a dig. Pretty, pretty pictures about some interesting architecture, but pottery is the key. So we're not going to mess with their pottery that they're working on. We're going to talk about some pottery uh, that came out of Tal al Hammam back, um, oh, maybe five, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually been sitting in the museum but now we brought it out for analysis, and um, here we go. So how about, let's, let's just pick a couple of these that are really cool. Uh, how about this one? And of course, we're talking about painted ware. Yes, the, right, right now we have painted pottery. And this is painted pottery, mostly, not all, but mostly from the palace area. Yeah. And you see this particular one. Now, when I feel it like this, it's very smooth, and it's been burnished. If I feel a piece like this that hasn't been burnished, just a normal Big surface, difference. it's just kind of rough. Yeah. But this one you can see, and I don't know if the camera can pick up on it, but it actually shines. Yeah, there's so a sheen bur on it. Burnishing is a, have a burnishing tool like a piece of an antler or a, or a smooth stone, and you rub the pottery, and it creates this sheen polish, or this polish yeah. on it. But you can see that this particular vessel um, is painted on the inside. It's called a carinated bowl. It has a carination, but look, Gary, it also has a snake. Little snake. So don't uh, like snakes. We don't know where he goes because he's broken off, but um, you can see that it's painted on the inside. We call this a carinated bowl. Did I mention that? Yep. Because it turns. A carination is a sharp turn in the vessel wall, and so. And so, if it's got if it's decorated on the inside, that means we call it kind of an open vessel where you can see the inside of the vessel. And so you never, you wouldn't bother to do this if it was a closed vessel that you didn't see the inside. Now let's see where Danny cut it. Oh, there's Danny's cut. See Danny's cut line? Fine job of cutting there, Danny. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's, uh, that one's pretty cool, but we've got, we've got a lot of cool ones. What do, you, what do you want to do next? Oh, this one's... That's beautiful. Now this, this is a bowl. Uh, it's, we'd actually call this, I think, a crater because it's very much like this one. Now these are all from the Middle Bronze Age. This is all from the, the Palace of Sodom, uh, the destruction of Sodom, and it's pretty fancy stuff. You can see that this has what's called a triple loop handle. We only have one of the loops left. Yeah, triple loop, loop base. Loop, loop, and by the yeah, way, these are the bases. all this pottery is blown up and strewn through the destruction matrix, moving toward from the southwest to the northeast. We find all of these pieces in different squares. They're not found all together usually. They're usually strewn in different squares. And when you look at the squares that they're found in, they're diagonal southwest and northeast of each other <laughs> like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting. So we know that that event, that explosive event, actually it was moving from the southwest to the northeast. And this is just one of the uh, evidences of that. But you can see all this, all these registers, we call these lines, between the lines is a register. We see the little squiggles going all around this one. Beautiful, de beautifully decorated and burnished vessel. Yeah, really nice. And again, now on the inside, this one is not decorated because this is a closed vessel. You don't look inside. Nothing inside worth seeing. And then just, just look though inside the rim, you can see even decoration right on the inside of the rim. So just little, just the, little hatching. Yep, the rim shows, so they decorated that. This is a, a really nice vessel with, as Steve pointed out, that triple loop. If these are handles, but they're used for the base here. So this was the base of the vessel. Three of these, the vessel sat on three of those. Really, really cool. And Steve, on this one, we found a piece today down at the Ark yeah. that's going to go along with this rim. Yes, exactly. And I know that if we check where this, this, this one was found 
in, in uh, where did it come from? I don't see, we'll have to look up the registration number, yeah. but I bet they come from different loci, and they may even come from different squares, yeah. meters apart. Yeah. And that's typical of this. This one was found strewn over a quite wide area, and as you can see, we never did find yeah. some of the pieces. Now, some of them may be in different bags from different squares. And right. as we go through them right now, we're beginning to yeah. see things. Like, oh, I remember that. And in fact, Dr. C, this morning, we had three quarters of a vessel, every, almost everything but the base. Didn't have the rim, but had the rest of the vessel, no base. He was pick, looking through some pottery from another square, and he said, here's the base to that vessel. And today he put it together. It's just, it's amazing. And it was blown apart by the destruction of the city the destruction that the Bible talks about. So, very, very cool. So, let's uh, let's do some more. They got some more cool stuff there. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is one of the favorite. These are just like little little triangles yeah. going down from the neck. That's a, that's a really, really common motif. Here's another one. I know we have more pieces of this vessel. Yeah. And uh, so, we'll maybe do some attachments <laughs> later on today. Um we have yeah. some more of this one. Yeah, we, we, uh, we we'll have go it. about two thirds of the distance around yeah. with once we attach this to those other pieces. So, but again, they're coming from different locations. In fact, they're being discovered in different locations in different years. Yeah. Sometimes not even in the same year. And again, the inside is not decorated because this is a closed vessel that you're not messing with the inside. Uh, even though you might be able to look in and see it, it, you don't, you don't you, decorate it. And you generally don't decorate where you're going to have uh, moisture yes, yes. Or, or water, something like that, or a soup or a, something. You yes. know, if it's wet, it's not going to go against the paint yeah. because it would ruin it. Because a lot of times the paint is not terribly stable. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then um, how about this, Steve? This is really... This, this is really unique. Now, I've, I, we've shown this to lots and lots of different scholars. This is a very, here's another piece of the, the, handle. of the handle. This is a very large storage jar. You can see how thick the clay is. It's a huge storage jar. You might even call it a pithos. It's so big. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see, here's the handle. So it would have a big handle here. It might even have four handles, Gary. Yes, yes. Um, it's big enough to be one of those four-handled jars. It has a cream, a white cream slip. It has a dark, almost blackish gray. It has a lighter, uh, almost, um, what'd you call that? Kind of a taupe. Yeah, taupe sounds kind good. Kind of a to me. Yellow, yellowy, kind of a yellowy, taupey color. And then here's another uh, piece of it. It also has a dark brown spread over that top of that taupey color. Now, what's interesting is, is that. It seems to be, Gary, that these are all the same kind of slips that are used on our cross white palace ware. Yes, it is, isn't it? Which looks like this. Yes. Okay, so we get a lot of these stripes, but this is created by a completely different process. This is actually a painted geometric design. This one's just sort of sl the slip, just slop, slip, slop, slip, slip slop. slopped on the vessel going any which direction. But um, to have a large jar, Painted in bichrome, I think is so rare. In fact, I've talked to a lot of other scholars who do Middle Bronze Age, uh, excavation in Middle Bronze Age context like we do, but they've never seen anything like this. Yeah, this is special. Here's actually your three colors. There's your brown, yeah, yeah. and there's the black, and then there's your taupe. Yeah. And uh, so it's all right there on that, the, the edge of that handle there. So, and again, here's the, here's the regular clay, and then they, they put a cream... We call it a slip. It's you paint it on. It's more. Clay, it's clay, but from a different color. And then you add. This actually has three colors: trichrome, three colors of clay of, of paint on this one. Really, really pretty. But now we should we should um, we should end up with our favorite vessel, your favorite and my favorite. Maybe the ugliest vessels. It's very possible. They're, the they're, they're rather well. Let's say homely or they're, even they're much homey. Better. Homey. Homey yeah. vessels. And these are the, we call them casseroles, because that's the only thing, you know, they, they look like something you'd cook lasagna yeah. on, right? Yes. They're, yeah, they're rather straight-sided. The base would just not be too far from this. In fact, it's probably broken right mm -hmm. off the base. 
And uh, so they're just, you know, yay big or even bigger, but they're straight up. They have a pie crust kind of decoration, applique added mm -hmm. to it. And they do it so many different ways. Now, this is a rather petite size. Yes. But look at this monster. Um, hugely thick walls. Look at the size of this pie crust decoration. And some additional holes punched into it. And these holes don't go all the way through, so they can't really have a function like for steam or something like that. Now, here's one that might be for letting steam out. These holes actually penetrate all the way through. So here you have a pie crust decoration lower than the rim mm -hmm. with holes punched out. Now, some scholars say, Gary, that this would be Middle Bronze Age one. Yes. Sometime around... 2000 BC. But some say that this kind of vessel would be more like Middle Bronze Age 2. Now, Middle Bronze Age 1 with the pie crust off the rim with holes above it. Yeah. Middle Bronze 2 with the pie crust on the rim and no holes. Yeah. Guess what? These are found in exactly the same context. Same place. In exactly the same yeah. living context as all of these were. And we have many, many forms that are not published in anybody's books. Yeah. Very we have exciting. forms that other people have not seen. So um, we're in the process of having some of our graduate students work through these forms and eventually to uh, publish them, maybe even in their theses or dissertations. Now, now what do you suppose they made, like the, the, this, the great big honker there, what do you suppose they made in a vessel like this? You know, Gary, I'm, I'm thinking that some of these vessels were kneading bowls mm -hmm. where you could put, where you could, they're heavy enough where you could set it on a counter and actually knead the bread and then push it to one side and then make smaller loaves where you would have multiple loaves in there together. Yep. And yep. then once they're all risen, like, like rolls, yeah. you know, like modern day uh, dinner rolls. Right? So you'd have a whole bunch of these dinner rolls, and then you take this and you put it on the fire or in the oven. Yeah, yeah. Put the whole vessel in the oven there. And they're poorly made. Uh, you get the idea that they uh, make them and use them once or twice yeah. or three times. I don't think they bought these one. at the Emporium. <laughs> no. I, I think, they, they, I think this, these were the cooks making these. Yeah. This looks like one I would have made. <laughs> so I think I like this one. This is the, the nicest of what we've got. And, uh, and I think this one's really nice and petite. It's very, yeah. very similar style, but um, same vessel, but much smaller, thinner, just, just really a, a petite little vessel. Well, these are our casseroles. That's our term. Some people just refer to them as cookers, cooking pots. And uh, this is all from the destruction of the city of Tal al Hamam, Sodom in the Bible world. Well, pretty cool stuff, and we're going to put some of this together this afternoon. We're going to put some of these pieces, yeah. the pieces we've got over in the ARC, our, our archaeological uh, laboratory, research lab. So, um, uh, this is a big day, great day. Got a bunch of graduate students here yep. getting a lot done, and Danny would really like us to get out of here so he could get his work yeah. done. <laughs> his photography work with his sock puppet right now. So uh, we say goodbye, Dr. Steve Collins, Gary Byers, Danny Sock Puppet, and we'll see you again soon for biblical archaeology for the 21st century.